before we had sex at the like the foot of the bed. And it's not more so of like, Lord help us to do this right, help us to make everything work. Life is always better. to talk about this topic today and we're not gonna make it weird we're gonna go into all the topics how it went what I expected what I didn't expect and hopefully it can help some of you guys I know that my perspective though is only one out of like millions and millions and billions of women um, so just try to keep that in mind. I also come from a Christian perspective. That's one of the reasons I decided to wait for my husband. And it's not one of those things that I felt like restricted, like where I had to do this sort of thing. I really wanted to wait for my husband for so many reasons. And I was so glad that I did. So to answer that question, I'm really glad that I waited. Just wanted to have a little gals chat or a guys chat from a girl's perspective if any guys here are curious, but I'm really excited to share with you guys kind of how this went. We got married like two years into being together and it was not easy waiting till marriage. We were striving for holiness in our marriage, well, leading up to our marriage, but it was very difficult and we were tested a lot. We had to practice a lot of the boundaries that we set for ourselves and when we finally got to have sex. It was great. I was so glad. <laughs> and it's like a part of our lives that we cherish and we love and it's only grown in that area. But for us to get into the story, we got married in the Chattanooga Valley between like Tennessee and Georgia, like that line. And we actually stayed at a tree house on the property of where we got married. So we had our reception and our ceremony and part of our honeymoon on the same property. I think the one part that just made me really nervous, I wasn't actually really nervous to have sex. I was more so nervous about the fact that everybody else is thinking about me having sex that night. And I'll just tell you right here that it was uncomfortable, like the actual physical act was uncomfortable, but it wasn't painful. It was just uncomfortable for me. I know some people have different experiences. Um, and it was, it just felt right. Like it felt very much right. And I will say that the tone was very much set by my husband who decided, I think we, this sounds weird to some of you. I know some of you guys are gonna start laughing, but we decided to pray before we had sex at the, like the foot of the bed. And it's not more so of like, Lord help us to do this right. Help us to make everything work <laughs> because all of that naturally happens. We were more so just really wanting to prioritize that time in our marriage moving forward to be sacred and beautiful and something that we can uh, just do and partake in and take up that gift when we need it in our marriage. And like, I know when we've been in fights and arguments in the past year that just admitting that there is like frustration and there's some things that really can't be expressed like why we're feeling a certain way towards each other and then just having sex and it helps <laughs> like a ton i just remember the first time like physically it was uncomfortable physically it was different and something i couldn't like describe but also spiritually and emotionally it felt like it was just like finally like my soul loves this person my heart loves this person and this part of our relationship is special and it's worth fighting for and i had a few friends ask me questions who had gotten married a little bit after me like about sex and how it was for them and some girls even in comments in youtube comments asked me Okay, well, you know, you said you were uncomfortable and it wasn't painful, but did you bleed? Like, did you pop your cherry? And I did have that happen. Actually, on our honeymoon, um, I was, like, 
bleeding, not trying to be graphic here, but trying to just really be helpful because I want people to know that this is normal. I thought I started my period early actually, and I went to the gynecologist for her to only tell me, no honey, this is normal. You just need to keep continuing this part of your relationship because you're married now and you should enjoy this and just press into it. Lean into this part of your relationship. And I did learn that about myself. And just to get a little kick and giggle, um, we went to the Cayman Islands for our honeymoon and it was great. We had a lot of like adventurous, fun times. We did a lot of activities because I thought the whole time that I was on my period. So things happen, like life happens and if you are with the person that you're supposed to be with in a committed relationship for life, then this shouldn't really matter that much. A lot of people put the emphasis on the act of sex and the physical part, but sex is so much bigger than that. I think what the enemy has done in our world has made it seem like it's not that big of a deal and do whatever you want. And I honestly am not going to give advice to people who have that sort of mindset because it's not really my place. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what to do. Those who understand where I'm coming from, the world has really made sex and the sexual world of things very exploited, very like an object. Like this is this whole fantasy and beautiful thing and we're gonna make it the theme and the basis of all of our Netflix shows. We're gonna make it the theme and the basis of all of our um, advertising and we're gonna make all of the traffic on the web go to like pornographic sites and all of this. Like that is our world. And so when you come from a perspective of, wait, I'm gonna wait till, not only am I gonna wait for marriage to have sex, but I'm also going to consider it as special and beautiful between me and my husband and not something that we all partake in with multiple people. That is weird and it's very offensive to some people. And so having that like realization and knowing that sometimes you really have to guard your heart and mind even within marriage is so important. So even beyond the first time of Nick and I be, being intimate with one another in that way, there was also just the times after that and how it changed and evolved. One, you don't always feel uncomfortable. That's not always the case. I would say like even today, like after I haven't had sex with Nick in a while uh, because I've been on my period or we've been traveling away from each other or whatever, it still can be uncomfortable. Like it's totally normal though. And you shouldn't like just expect it to be Okay, the first time was uncomfortable and maybe painful, and then after all of that, we're good to go. It just depends, and I think that like the advice that my gynecologist gave me to continue in that part of my relationship and continue to be intimate is great advice because I notice when Nick and I kind of have like a regular schedule, not that we're scheduling it out yet because we don't have kids, we don't really need to do that yet, but when we do like intentionally like make sure that we kind of have like a rhythm so where we're having it like somewhat frequently then i notice that our chemistry is better and that that part of our relationship is much more seamless uh, i just i'm really proud of you guys for making that a priority in your life and in your marriages or relationships. I know that some of you guys are either engaged or have just got married or are in a serious relationship and it's just really, really vital and important that you make sure that the things that um, you're focusing your mind are on, on aren't necessarily always like physical because life isn't all roses and sex, honestly. <laughs> I love that I've been able to talk about this uh, a little bit because I know that my audience used to be much younger and I used to like kind of grow up with my audience. I've done this since I was 13 and now 22 and it just feels like we're, we're like moving into a new ground like where I can speak to you guys as adults and we're all going through this together and we're all trying to learn new things and we're open to learning and not necessarily like 
we know everything and we're set on everything and I think that that is such a good mindset to have to believe that you can still learn from other people you can still learn from maybe people that you never expected to and I'm just grateful that you guys chose to watch this video I I just didn't have any expectations moving into this part of my life or seeing anything that would make me think that something has to be a certain way and this is what it's supposed to look like and all of that. I think it just helps so much to like clear your mind of that and get your get rid of the junk in your mind that often the world tries to feed us. Um, so that is something I'm very thankful for. and. Nick has helped himself in that way too because uh, it's just, it's not easy. Trust me, I know, it is not easy and um, I'm just really grateful we got to have this chat today. I'm not gonna keep it going, but I love you all. Thank you so much for staying, staying with me this whole video and we will chat more in the comments, right? You're gonna leave a comment about all the things that maybe you've experienced. Um, maybe not all the things because comments only allow you to comment so much, but uh, I'm open on DMs to hear your stories as well, and I look forward to all the conversations we're going to have, and I will see you guys in our next video, which will be with Nick, and we're going to be talking about how our first year of marriage has gone, so I will see you guys then, and have a great day. Deuces!